Alrighty folks, uh, so we've got a pretty serious milestone today on the front drive unit in Varter. And uh, that is that I have just now managed to successfully run the IGBT drivers um, without the original Tesla logic board being present. So we've worked out how to power them and how to send uh, the commands to turn on each of the six uh, individual um, IGBTs. Uh, so that's pretty major. Uh, we do have some more working out to do, things like temperature sensors and so, and so on. So let, let me just show you uh, briefly what we've got going on here. So what we have is we can look at our logic board here just on the bench for a minute so this is the logic board uh, from the front drive unit as I mentioned previously there's a 24-way connector here um, which routes the signals from the logic control to the IGBT drivers you'll see I have a wire soldered on to pin 24 here which is one of the local grounds uh, so I could measure the pins uh, resp respective to that ground. If you flick it over here, you, know, you can see on the back that it's pretty. You know they've been fairly nice to me. They've put a, you know they put a thing on the silk screen here saying power stage. So what we've been doing is we've been looking at what these signals do in various conditions. So for example. got my notes here let me flick back a few pages so for example here is measurements taken uh, with the logic board and IGBT driver connected together and referenced at the pin 24 ground so just been measuring various voltages um, you know going back further than even got all kinds of notes in here now it's a bit, it's a bit of a mess um, you know so for example here it's another one kind of similar but measured to chassis ground and if I go back even further uh, that's the logic board on its own so just uh, powered up on the bench minus the IGBT driver stage and we, we kind of then you know, started looking at what some of these levels were and where they were going on the PCB so what that's enabled us to do now has been to get to a kind of a master diagram here so for example um, here we see that we have two pins that supply 12 volts two pins that supply 5 volts and we have two pins uh, that, so that provide ground from the logic board to the IGBT drivers and we've identified our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 IGBT driver signals uh, if you want to, you know, have a look at this, just pause the video there. So that's our six IGBT driver signals. Now, other things that we ha will have going on here, I just remembered, while I'm on camera, nothing like making a note. Temp sensors. Okay. So we have IGBT drivers, IGBT fault, we'll have DC bus voltage measurement. DC bus discharge and of course temperature sensors that I just managed to remember now. So anyway, enough paperwork. Let's go have a look at what we've got going on on the bench here. So what we have is our front drive unit inverter minus the logic board. Um, on the back here I have connected the high voltage DC, ca DC cables. Uh, they're, you know, they go through this strange box thing, which I've no idea what that does, but we'll find it out at a later stage. Um, and we have a power supply here connected up. And what I've got is I've got the power supply ground connected to the ground, uh, you know, the zero volts battery neutral wire. Um, I have the power supply positive here connected to just a kind of a bog standard uh, 55 watt 12 volt headlamp bulb. Uh, power supply is set to 12 volts. Now I have a jumper lead then from the other side of the headlamp bulb uh, going to one of our phase terminals. So 
what I'm doing basically is I'm inje injecting current through the the he the headlamp bulb um, into the phase terminal uh, through the low side IGBT back out through ground and back to the power supply and so what I have here then grab my chair I'm a little bit lazy we have here then is I just put a little uh, just a, a dummy plug into the um, into the IGBT to logic board multi pin connector and if I've got a got another lead with a 1k resi resistor uh, connected to the 5 volt line and I'm going to just stimulate this bottom left pin and if we watch the bulb, watch the birdie bulb comes on signifying we're turning on the uh, phase C low side IGBT and then it's just a case of repeating that um, for the three, lo the three low sides and then swapping the power supply around to send the power in on the positive and come back back out through the phase lines to identify the high side. So that's where we're at from an IGBT drive perspective. Alrighty, so now that we know how to drive the IGBTs, the next thing we want to do is to be able to measure uh, the DC bus voltage. So it turns out that pin 1 here uh, was giving me some interesting readings. So I decided to give that a bit of stimulus. So what I've done is so I've removed my power supply here from the headlamp and connected uh, the power supply normally just to the plus and minus battery terminals. And I'm going to set my voltage here to 10 volts. So right now, if we look at the voltage on that pin, it's at about 7.9 millivolts. If I can lean over here and hit the power supply on, you're going to see that that jumps up to just under 70 millivolts. And let's say we want to change that voltage now to 20 volts. Now we're at 130 millivolts. So pin 1 is basically giving us a representation of the DC bus voltage. If we think about that, if 20 volts is giving us um, that, 200 would give us 1.3 and 400 would give us uh, 2.6. So that's kind of about the scaling factor that we have there. And the good news here with this is that unlike on the large drive unit, uh, we don't seem to have a requirement for the uh, negative 5 volt supply. Alright, so now that we have IGBT drivers, we have DC bus discharge, next thing easiest to find are the temperature sensors. So I've just uh, turned off the DC bus power from the bigger power supply. You'll be pleased to hear that's not whining away. I've just gone in here with a little lead and I've just probed around some of the likely suspects with the meter uh, just taking a resistance measurement to ground. And you'll see that we have found three pins there uh, with about a 55k resistance. So if we go back to our diagram here, my dodgy notes again. Uh, so pin one represents the DC bus voltage and then we have uh, these pins here, a total of four of them, but three give me broadly the same resi resistance. Uh, this pin, this pin, and this pin. So I'm going. I'm calling them those guys. Temp one, two, and three. There's another one here which gives me 11.8k. So I don't know if that is a temperature reading. It probably is. That may be um, related to the case temperature, perhaps. Not sure. Anyway, uh, so these three are our heatsink temperature sensors, and we've got our DC bus voltage sensor found as well. So of our list, we've found IGBT drivers, we've found DC bus voltage measurements, 
uh, 20 volts equal to 0.13 volts and uh, we found four temperature sensors definitely three maybe four so last thing is we need to find are the IGBT fault lines and the DC bus discharge control alrighty guys so I'm afraid I'm gonna have to leave you here um, I haven't fully worked out all the connections yet but let me just show you quickly what I suspect we have going on so if we look at our page here where we have most things worked out uh, the things that we have left are the IGBT faults and the DC bus discharge control now I've identified a few pins here uh, that I believe are the IGBT fault lines so there's one two and three here that have five volts present on them so they may be representative of a fault signal um, from three of the drivers additionally if we flick the page over we have a look at uh, the voltages here when we were complete with the logic board <clears throat> you see we have one two uh, three and four lines here that had five volts on them uh, sorry five lines that had five volts on them now five is an is an odd number if it had been six I'd have been fairly convinced they were my high and low side faults there may be something else going on there we then have two lines here that again when we're complete we read 3.8 volts and 3.8 volts on them now they I believe are what controls the DC bus discharge and if I look um, if I look here sorry I'm just getting confused again yeah so I think this pin and this pin are what controls the, the, the DC bus discharge but I haven't quite worked that out as yet so alrighty folks uh, sorry I can't finish this out in this video today because I just got other stuff I need to do right now but uh, we will be back and you know maybe taking a break from it is exa exactly what I need to get my few brain cells uh, to actually work on the problem so um, before I give the usual ending here I just want to say that I woke up this morning to a very pleasant surprise indeed um, I have received a very significant uh, donation via PayPal from a very kind gentleman uh, I'm not going to name names or amounts uh, but it is in support of the work that I'm doing on the, te the Tesla stuff so thank you very much indeed all right, um, so as usual, don't forget to subscribe and leave me a like. Uh, there will be a link in the description uh, to my Patreon. Um, so if you like what I'm doing and you would like to financially support me, which would be great, uh, please do visit that link um, and consider making a donation that way. Also in the description will be uh, a link to my don uh, PayPal donations email address which is donations at evbmw.com if you would prefer to use paypal all right guys so thanks a lot for tagging along uh, we've made some very good progress today certainly be enough to start designing our open source logic board so yeah that's about it and we will see you in the next video um so happy igbt driving